Hey guys, it's Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and the Green Engineers, and welcome back to my Shredder product development series. Uh, so we are again looking at the Shredder. We finished the hopper uh, yesterday, and now today is the catch-up video for basically the video that I was down uh, yesterday. So let's see what we have so far. So. Uh, basically, here is the hopper that we came up with. Uh, I do think that it does need a little bit extra work, but uh, that's something that we can come back at a later date and uh, mess with. So, uh, basically, the issue was that you know this doesn't line up exactly. Whoa! Didn't save. That's weird. Looks like it didn't save for whatever reason. I don't know why. But I'll fix it off screen because it was not like that before. Oh, that might have been just one side was like that. Oh, oh no, this one's doing it too. I see. So some are good, some are not so good. Interesting. They're all pretty damn close. Okay, so yeah, basically the issue was that these don't meet up down here. And uh, yeah, the angle's slightly off. I'm thinking that's because these, I changed how it was bent on this piece and this piece a little bit. So no, we're gonna have to also look at that as well. So um, that's one thing. Uh, I'm gonna have to look online to find some sheet metal guys that'll, um, but th these are pretty simple bends. So I'm pretty sure that I could just uh, have it lasered. And when I have it lasered, I could have them etch this line of uh, where to put my, uh, where to put my, um, what's it called? Where to put my uh, finger, my uh, my finger brake. So put my finger brake there and then bend. And so I could have them etch a line, put my finger brake there and bend it up. Drill my, and have them, have them punch the holes with the laser and then do that. Or on my water jet, when I get my water jet, obviously it's a little bit harder to do the, uh, the etch. Uh, that's a little harder to do. But, um, uh, cause you know, basically you have water shooting everywhere, but, uh, we can figure it out. Otherwise it looks, uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with it. There is a couple little holes. There is going to be a couple little holes, but nothing that really a small piece, uh, nothing I'm, I'm too worried about. If the end user wants to, they could, you know, stick some, put some hot glue or whatever in there. Um, but other than that, this should be nice and sturdy, uh, held together. And again, this is a tenth of an inch. I'll probably drop it to 16 gauge steel. 16 gauge steel is a sixteenth of an inch. Um, that's like 62, uh, 0 0.0625, 62 and a half thousandths. And if we go to Harbor Freight Finger Bender, so we go hover freight here. We go finger bender. Finger break, sure, break. Finger break. This guy's a little big, three feet. I need something three feet. Maybe even 18 inches. This is only 12 inches uh, long, so 16 gauge handles material as thick as 12 gauge sheet metal, 16 gauge mild steel, 22 gauge stainless steel. Uh, so yeah, 16 gauge, 16 gauge is uh, 1 16th. Approximate thickness and fractions of an inch, 1 16th, which is uh, um, one eighth is 0.125, so half of that is 0 0.0625.
so that's a sixteenth of an inch. So yeah, we'll probably drop that down to that dimension and we should have no problem. Yeah, so this is a tenth of an inch. So I'm curious what happens if we do that right now. So let's go here. Let's go here before we jump into only four minutes in. So and let's change the sheet metal rule. Maybe you change the sheet metal rule. Let's see. Changing to a different sheet metal rule. Okay, so let's do this. Hmm. All right, well. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll have to go back to this and change it, but uh, right now, not really that big of an issue. Um, I'll figure that out later. In the meantime, we'll do the motor, and when I figure this out later, I'll show you guys how to change the sheet metal rule to make it a 16th of an inch 16 gauge steel. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I'll do some research on that. And uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, so um, we can go back to the shredder. Let's call this motor. Okay, so basically what I wanted to show you guys with uh, some of the motor uh, ideas that I found for, for, a different power, <gasps> for a different power motor is I was at Harbor Freight. And I saw this guy. Is it this guy? Or this guy? One of the two. Basically, it was for a impact wrench. And this is kind of the right size, because again, we don't want something gigantic. I mean, this is the size of our machine here. So we don't want something super massive, right? So, Delivers 234 pounds of, uh, of max torque. Again, I'm not a big fan of the impact part, so maybe I could remove the impact part. But it was one of these. I don't know if it's a Bauer. I think it was a Bauer. And then, like Bauer, I think is basically like a. Um, here's an air. Impact wrench delivers. 1190 foot pounds of breakaway torque, bolt breakaway torque. And I don't know if that includes the impact part. This here says 1000 bolt breakaway torque, maximum torque foot pounds is 1000 foot pounds. So, so something like that, a thousand foot pounds at a certain distance, 
and also to drop the RPM down. And this is 3 eighths of an inch, so that's pretty good. <laughs> What's the one I saw there? I can't remember if it was electric or what it was. What about this guy? Speed max 10,000. This is air. So basically, oh, here it is. This is the this is the one right here. Extreme heavy duty. Oh, three only three hundred. But it's an eight point five amp at one twenty. That's a. Uh, uh, 1,020 watts divided by 750 watt, about 750 watt per horsepower, that's about a horsepower and a half. So that's kind of what I was looking at. Obviously not a hundred dollar motor, preferably. And you can see that that size is completely usable. Because again, the idea is that I want it to be about this size, about six and a half inch, about six and a half inches long. And it, with the head sticking out, the head could stick out further but I don't want it to go past this. So basically, I want it to be from here to the front. So let's look here. So from here to the front. And that is seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter inches. That's my target, right? So something like this, this might even be worth it to take it apart. And then these are all brushed, right? These are brushed uh, versions. Twenty one hundred RPM max torque two thirty four eleven blah blah blah. And again, I'm not I don't want I don't want the whole impact part uh, because basically it's gonna try to rip this thing apart, right? Is that 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 jiving is gonna try to break this thing. And so uh, definitely wanna drop the RPM down. So I'm thinking from to 2100 down to 880 and then also I want to add a little a little tunable speed guy so let's see 2100 I'm gonna add it down to like 80 80 divided by 2100 so that's um, that's a percentage so basically the the uh, this gear has to be that size uh, compared to 2100, so let's look at 2100 divided by the 80. That's 26 times. So obviously we're not going to get 26 times because this guy is, if we do this and look here, this guy is, uh oh, circle, two point. This guy is three inches in diameter. So three inches in diameter, we need to have something be 26 times smaller than that. So three inches divided by 26.25 is equal to 0.114. So that thing's only an eighth of an inch. So that's not gonna work. So either, one of, another one of my ideas is to have a gear train, which is, let's say the motor ends up here. So we could have one small gear and then another small gear that goes into this one and then it rotates in this way and this one rotates in that way. So that is another one of my ideas. Uh, and I think that will help quite a bit. So, and then let's see what's the power on this. Here it says high 7 amp. So this is a 
120 times 7. That's 840 divided by 750. That's 1.12. So the other one's about 1.5, and, and this is 1.12. So let's jump on AliExpress. And let's see what type of impact wrench motor. Impact wrench motor. Let's browse here to see what we find. I think it's about a pound. It doesn't weigh very much. I think that thing's really, really small. There's the brushes. What are you doing? Yeah, don't do that. Almost uh, no data. Forty-five. Okay, so let's see. Oops. Forty-five millimeters, two inches. Ooh, that's well, it's about two inches in diameter. That's a decent sized motor. So forty-five millimeters is about one point seven five, and it's a hundred millimeters long total. 100 millimeters long total is three point is about uh, four inches, so not quite the length that we are looking for. And it looks like a lot of these are very similar. And it looks kind of like that's their standard. I mean, really, one of the things to do is to buy one of these things and tear it apart. Buy one of these, uh, from these guys, buy this one for 50 bucks and tear it apart and look at what it has on the inside and how it does this guy and then also here because this is se this is 70, uh, this is 100, um, this is one and a half horsepower at 7 amps. So that's pretty good, and uh, I think that we get quite a bit of uh, torque. Oh, it's a Hitachi motor. Interesting. But this definitely brings up an interesting idea is using this guy. Um, and this is 20 bucks. Let's see what they have on Alibaba. Alibaba. Hmm. 
And again, a lot of these, they don't look like they're hoarded. This guy right here is 900 watts. It's got big, big duties in it. 2200 RPM. Weight is about seven pounds. That's got to be a big gear train in there. That's got to be what that is. It's got to have a giant gear train in there. 900 watts. Pretty close to that, 1,000 watts. Torque, 300 and... Newton meters to foot pounds. Newton meters is 350. And that's about 258 foot pounds. Uh, 258, and then we're going to drop it 26 times about 26.25 times 260. And that's about 6,000. 6,000 foot, 60, 68, 25. And again, I might drop it to one, R, one RPM per second. So that's 60 RPM. That's, I think that's plenty fine. I don't think it needs to spin any faster than that. Ooh, powerful clutch and gearbox, okay. So yeah, maybe the idea is to uh, crack it open and look what it has on the inside. Not unless they have it over here. Okay, so this is an air one. It's also an air one. And this is a battery one. Let's see. Oh, it's like a cheap it's like a cheap battery one. Let's see what let's see what it's got inside there. So here's some sort of clutch of some type. Okay, these are needle bearings. So this clutch pushes on the inside of this housing. Let's talk about all the different screws, take the handle apart. Okay, so there it is. So that guy, let's see, I'm gonna say that guy's probably, yeah, that guy's probably about two inches in diameter. And so here's all the electronics. Here's where it attaches the battery. Some sort of voltage regulator of some sort. Okay, so the motor looks very similar to what we were talking about. Oh, he's pushing the pushing the commutator out. And this looks like the impact section, which again we don't need. So what's really confusing to me is how they make that much torque with that okay. Oh, so here is the gear assembly. Okay, so that's... Yeah, so it's got a planetary gear set up. And so this stays stationary. And this moves... No, it's got to transfer. This is bolted. Oh. So what I think happens, let's look at the lid here. And 
interesting. So what we might have to do is we might have to get one of these ones and tear it apart from Harbor Freight. And I think that we could get something that um, will work. But that's a decent sized motor. That's probably about, I don't know, about two inches about two inches long by about um, by about one by about maybe no it's I wouldn't say maybe two inches maybe two inches in diameter so could we use I wonder if I could just cut this housing and then use this so buy one of these wrenches, take the housing apart, cut it, get rid of the battery. But obviously the one that I'm talking about is corded. I don't know how much power this one's got. But that max RPM is not going to fly. So let's see, what do they have? Because 250... Uh, 250 is, I think, a little low for what we need. Uh, I'll show you guys a um, uh, one of my calculations later that I posted on a website, uh, the uh, Precious Plastic website. Seventy bucks is not bad. Three thousand RPM. Why are you nailing it? And there's where one of the brushes go. The other brush is probably on the other side. Okay. What are the dimensions? 130 millimeters. Oh, that's a big guy. That's about five inches. Oh, that's a big guy. Yes, yeah, this is electric car conversion kit. So that's what I'm thinking is get one of those. This is nice. And they're making the magnets. It's a little bit over one horsepower. Torque is low. Torque is three Newton meters. It's only two, it's only two point, uh, two and a quarter foot pounds. So yeah, when I'm thinking the best thing to do is go with the impact wrench motor. And basically I, I need to take a look at one and see how, what it will take to take the impact part off. So something like this. So this has got a seven tooth and obviously it's a very, very small motor. The question is how fast does this guy actually spin? Hmm. 
and also what the voltage is. And But yeah, it says that many volts, but is that DC or AC? I mean, most of these motors are going to be DC, just how they're set up, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so basically I'm thinking that these are very, very high torque motors. I mean, uh, they're decently good torque for what they are, but when they when they uh, when they step them down drastically, they increase torque by a large margin. So what I'm thinking is to get one of these guys, and then uh, see what I could do. <gasps> um, about getting these guys to work for my application here. Um, at least in the, in the beginning to kind of retrofit one on there and then to show proof of concept and then see if I could talk to whoever manufactures these and see if I could just get the assembly uh, without all of the casting and without all this other stuff and they get like a secondary box to put this thing in and then to have because I do like this hand crank I do like this because it basically works perfectly if if you, if it's jammed, you could flip it, uh, flip it, uh, flip the polarity of it, um, and then eventually I could add a electric version where it changes uh, it basically changes it around. But I don't think that it's worth buying the hundred dollar one. But we will see. Uh, let's see. What they have on Amazon. Here's a oh here's a porter cable for eighty bucks, a seven and a half amp. Four hundred and fifty foot pounds. But tearing apart an eighty dollar to possibly mess it up. But yeah, I mean, I would really hate to. use one of these things and then tear it apart so let's see what we have here so here's a nice port of cable Just gonna put this big. here's a 360 oh this is a long guy this is 260 
360. Three hundred the Dewalt. This is basically the same thing as that other one. Yeah, two thirty. Hmm. So yeah, pretty much find the best bang for the buck around fifty bucks of these things. Uh, buy one, then we'll take a look at uh, how we're gonna go about putting the thing together. But it does look like we can bolt it uh, pretty easily, even if we have to reuse this piece. But again, we, we want to get rid of any of the wrenching action, so we will see. All right, so this has been uh, Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and the Green Engineers. We'll probably figure this out uh, later on today. Uh, we'll come back to it and uh, finalize some of this, uh, some of these uh, concepts here and, and see if we can talk to somebody about possibly uh, selling us just that assembly or we might even buy one of these things and tear it apart. All right, uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, I will see you guys later on today. Take it easy, peace.